Hi, I'm David Greenbaum, one of the reference librarians at Clayton State. Welcome to the special social distancing video version of my library research and information literacy session. I've broken what would be a single in-class session into five shorter videos. This is the fifth in the series, and today I'm going to discuss how and why to cite your sources and avoid plagiarism. In other videos in this series, I talk to you about different search strategies you can use while searching library tools. I talk about different kinds of information sources and which tools you can use to locate them. We take a live look at the library homepage and conduct searches using those tools. And I talk about critically evaluating the information sources you find. You've almost certainly heard from professors, administrators, and others that plagiarism is one of the greatest possible breaches of academic integrity. And if you're found to have plagiarized, you can suffer severe consequences. So what is plagiarism exactly? It's defined as using another person or group's intellectual property without proper attribution. The good news is that unless you're actually maliciously plagiarizing, it's pretty easy to avoid. The majority of unintentional plagiarism comes from failing to take note of where you found the information you're using in your work. When you take notes, you should always start by noting down the source, author, title, and publication information of the work you're using in the same place you're logging the content you plan to use in your paper. That way you won't find yourself forgetting where it came from and failing to cite properly. Scholarly writing can be compared to a conversation with each contribution responding to or building on the writing that came before. In a previous video, I mentioned that scholarship builds on prior scholarship, so that's a very important reason to cite our sources. To break it down a little further, we also cite sources in order to establish the context of our scholarly conversation, to say this is the background of whatever we're talking about, this is how we got to where we are now, and what we're building on. We cite also to establish our own authority and credibility, saying essentially, I know my stuff because I've read this and this, and I understand what I'm talking about. We cite to give credit where it's due. Credit and citations are really the currency of modern academia, and they're what scholars rely on for their reputation and career advancement, so it's important to give that credit. And finally, we cite sources so as to avoid being accused of plagiarism, with all the consequences that entails. When we talk about using another's intellectual property, we mean more than just quoting them word for word. but Intellectual property refers not just to their words, but also to their ideas, the product of their original thoughts. So when you quote another person's words directly, you already know to cite that source, set it off in quotations or block indented text, etc. But you should also cite when you're paraphrasing, that is, recasting someone else's ideas in your own words. And even when you're summarizing or boiling down the general gist of an entire article or long passage into your own words, it's still someone else's original work, so it'll need to be cited. So, how do you cite your sources? Well, you cite them according to the appropriate citation style, which is generally determined by the discipline of the work. In English 1101, you use the MLA style, which is one of a couple of widely accepted styles for the humanities. Other popular citation styles are the APA style for social sciences and the Chicago style, also called the Turabian style for the guidebook's author. Other disciplines also have their own specialized styles that are for one reason or another particularly useful for that area. Each of these citation styles has some sort of guidebook, which is essentially a recipe or set of instructions for how to put together a proper citation in that style. Pretty much all of them share the fact that they call for some sort of footnote or in-text citation at the point where you use another source, and then a bibliography or list of works cited at the end, giving the complete list of all the sources consulted in the creation of the work. 
It's way beyond the scope of this presentation to try to tell you how to build a proper citation, but I can point you to one extremely useful resource. If you're not familiar with it, you should check out the Purdue OWL, or Online Writing Lab. It's got easy to understand guidelines for all three of the major style books, with example citations for, frankly, an amazing variety of different source types, both print and online. You can find it at the URL on this slide, although I'll admit I usually just Google Purdue OWL to get there. If you're going to be using it a lot, you might want to bookmark it, though. This is the last of my English 1101 series. I hope you've found the videos useful. Thanks for tuning in. And as a reminder, the librarians are available to help you even when we're all in our own spaces. You can reach us by phone, by email, or via live chat from the library homepage. Goodbye.